Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is video editorial for the problem Edges in MST taken from Code Forces, which is rated 2300. So let's see what the problem says. So the problem statement is quite clear. You are given a tree with n nodes and n minus one edges, of course. And for each edge, you have to tell whether if it belongs to every MST, at least one of the MSTs or none of the MSTs. Let's understand this with an example. Okay, so suppose this is the input graph. Okay, these are the edges in the form A, B, N, W, where the th uh, third input is actually your weight, right? So like uh, one of the edges, one, four, one, right? And this edge, right? So this is your input edges. For each edge, you have to tell whether, right, uh, it belongs to none of the MST, all of the MST, or at least one of the MST. So you see, this edge will be present in all of the MSTs, right? Now, why? You see, uh, there will be like three of the MSTs. Please correct me if I'm wrong. One of them will be this, right? One of them will be this. Third one will be this, okay? Beside this, uh, in all of them, if you see, this edge is present, right? So this edge will be present in uh, all of them, right? In any, that means in any MST, right? These three are actually replaceable. So uh, in some of the MST, this is pres I mean, this is not present. Same goes for this and same goes for this. So for these edges, you'll print at least one of them. And the last edge that you see, this one is actually present in none of the MST. So you are printing none. So now I'm assuming that the problem statement is quite clear, right? Now, now let's see how we will solve this problem. Now, important thing is, uh, don't uh, since the problem requires a lot of uh, prerequisites, like you should have the knowledge of MST, how to calculate it, uh, disjoint set union, because I'm uh, going to use cruise scales algorithm. And also, we are going to utilize the knowledge of uh, bridges, right? So, uh, how to find bridges. You should have knowledge of all of these. If you have not knowledge of any of, uh, if you are missing knowledge of any one of the concepts, I would highly advise you to go ahead and complete that first, right? There's no point uh, watching this editorial and trying to figure out the solution of this, okay? So, observation one is this. If all of the weights are of different weights, right? Uh, all of the edges are of different weight, then there is no problem at all. Simply apply the uh, MST algorithm, find the MST and the edges that you find that are present in your MST, uh, for that you can print any and for those which are not included in the MST, you can print none, right? Now the problem uh, starts only when we have edges with equal weights. Now the problem starts. So in this process, uh, when we have uh, equal weights, what we are going to do, we are going to process equal weight edges together as a group. How? All of this will be quite clear. Uh, by the way, this you can prove yourself using a uh, contradiction. Okay. So, uh, so what we are going to do, we are going to process all of the edges with equal weights together. Okay. Don't worry. All of this will be clear because I'm going to explain all of this with an example test case. Okay. Along with code as well. So don't worry. So now observation three, if you see uh, an edge, let's say ABW is actually uh, uh, will be part of MST, at least one of the MST, if it connects two different connected components, right? It makes sense, right? Because if you have studied uh, cruise calls or even Prim's algorithm for finding uh, your MST, you know that you add an edge if and only if it connects two different connected components, right? In cruise calls algorithm, what do you check? You check uh, for this edge, you will check whether uh, find of A is not equal to find of B. Then only you will connect this edge, right? And what does that mean? That means that A and B, this edge basically is connecting two different connected components, right? And that's exactly what our observation three is. Nothing special here, right? So an edge ABW will be part of some of the MST if it connects two different connected components. Now, observation, I mean, <laughs> sorry, that means the status of this edge, if it's connects two different connected components, then its status will either be any or at least one, right? Because this will be part of some of the MST. It is possible that it is part of every MST, in that case, it will be any, but at least uh, its status will be one of these, right? Now, how will you differentiate whether its status is any or at least one? Well, that you can differentiate using this. Now comes the bridges. Now, if this edge is forming a bridge, right, then its status will be any, otherwise it will be at least one, right? If this is a bridge, of course, if you remove it, uh, you're, you won't be able to form an MST. Right. So uh, and when I'm saying bridges, uh, I mean, this edge is bridge. I'm not saying that this uh, this edge is bridge in the original graph. No, uh, 
we'll keep uh, one extra graph with ourselves uh, which will help us determine uh, whether this uh, this edge is actually bridge in that graph or not uh, and why we are keeping that graph uh, you remember when you when you're processing the edges in in, in the order of increase basically non-decreasing order using cruz cal's algorithm you keep uh, your your uh, disjoint sets keep on reducing because you basically keep on merging them right and that is the graph in which you have to check whether this edge is actually forming a bridge or not right because in this in that graph only it matters whether this bridge uh, this edge is a bridge or not again all of these observation feel like um, maybe you're feeling like all of these are going over your head don't worry here we are going to take an example and everything will be quite clear so here you see, uh, this is the original graph. This is the actual graph. We are not keeping this. We are only keeping this uh, list of the edges, right? And you, what you'll do, you'll sort this, uh, sort the edges based on the uh, weights, right? So let me show you the code also. You see, for each edge, since we are going to sort it and we have to print their uh, status in order in which we re read these edges, right? So you also need their index, right? So this is my structure edge and I have list of edges, right? So what we are doing in the main function, let me show you. Yeah, we are reading N and M and the number of nodes and the number of edges. And then uh, since we are using disjoint set, I'm initializing parent of each disjoint set to I itself, right? Now, our, uh, here we are reading all of the edges, right? And I'm also keeping track of the index of each of the edges. This will help us print the uh, print solution. Because of course, after sorting, uh, we may lose their uh position so that's why we have to keep keep track of that also also so what we are doing we are simply sorting all of the edges based on their weights you see comparator function what it does it takes input two edges and simply uh sorts them based on their weights right now after reading all of the edges and after sorting them what we are going to do we are going to process all of the edges right we are going to go through all of the edges and each time we will be processing the edges in uh, in in groups right of equal weights right and you'll you'll see there are three for loops right we will go through uh, the group of equal weight edges three times right why let me show you first of all uh, here you see uh, this will be showing you a starting point of the group right so starting from this point i'm going to process all of the wedges oh sorry all of the edges having equal weight one right and that edge is this itself right so what i'll do i'll check whether these two are already connected or not you see the parent of uh, and that how you check you remember cruz cal's algorithm you check the uh, whether find of a is equal to find of b or not in this case find of a is a itself and find of b is b itself right they are not already connected that means i can add this edge right uh it's, it's, its status i'll be setting as one right and i'll be adding an edge in the adjacency list of a i'll add b and in the adjacency list of b i'll add a right so now this is the graph in which you have to check the uh check for the edge whether it's it, it's forming a bridge or not okay so status will be set to one right status zero means none of the mst one means at least one of the mst and two means all i have to print any here okay so change it to any so its, its status will be set to at least one this will be changed to two upgraded to two if edge this edge this is the ith edge the first edge if its edge is actually uh, i mean if this edge is actually a uh what do i say bridge okay so what is happening here you are going through all of the edges and one by one you are checking whether this edge can be added or not and how you are doing that this is the first for loop you are going through all of the edges which are having equal weight right for that what you are doing you're simply saying hey add this edge to add edge what you are sending you are sending its uh, a and b right nodes and also its index so let me show you what does the add edge uh, function does it simply finds their parents and check whether their parents are different if their parents are different don't do anything right simply return otherwise what you'll do you'll set the result to at least one right and uh, uh, in the adjacency list of A, you will insert B. And in the adjacency list of B, you will insert A. And just keep in mind that we are also keeping track of the index of the edge, right? Because this is important. When you are going in this graph and finding, hey, this edge is actually a bridge. I should change its status to 2, right? How will you do that? To do that, you need to keep track of its uh, index. And that's why we are also saving the index, right? Clear? So uh, one of, first for loop for adding all of the edges, right? After that, what you'll do, the second thing is that you'll go through this graph 
and then you will find hey uh, uh, find the edge uh, bridges right so again you will go through the same set of uh, edges starting from i again remember we are not changing i here you see we are not incrementing i at all so our starting point each time is i so i'm going through all of the edges again uh, and checking whether uh, parent of a is, is uh, visited or not basically now you have to apply dfs and find the bridges right parent of one is one visited no one is not visited that means you have to make a dfs call and identify whether here you find any bridges or not so you make that dfs call one and two will get visited right one and four i mean and then you'll find that hey this edge is actually a bridge since this edge is a bridge how am i doing this first of all so i'm going through the edges and finding parent of a right and i'm checking whether this is visited or not this is not visited that means i'll make a dfs call to uh, identify uh, in this connected component find the bridges right so that is being done here i've already taught you how you can find out the bridges right but this is uh, uh, a little bit modified algorithm why because the algorithm that i've taught you considers that uh, there are no multiple edges between same uh, pair of nodes but here it can happen actually and for that uh, you have to modify the algorithm in in, in a little bit way right uh, so either you can learn this on code forces you can simply search uh, finding bridges if having multiple edges right or it, later uh, i'll be making a lecture also on this how you can find bridges in a graph containing multiple edges between same pair of nodes right so in this thing all i'm doing is again i'm utilizing in time low time right uh, the standard thing that we do with bridges and uh, now we are also keeping track of the edge number if this condition holds that means uh, this edge is actually a bridge and hence you are changing its status to two if you see this edge is actually in this graph if you see this is actually a bridge right if you remove this number of connected component going to increase right and hence you will change the status of this edge to two right we are done after this second for loop right where we go through all of the edges and check whether they are visited or not and if not that means this connected component is not visited for finding bridges and you make a dfs call so that in that connected component you can find all of the bridges after we are done finding with bridges it's time to merge right in in cruise calls algorithm what do you do uh you check whether this edge can be added in your uh mst or not and after that you simply merge it and this is the final step go through all of the edges again and simply say hey merge a and b right and what you are doing here in merge you are finding parent of a by, uh, and parent of b right and after that since you have created a graph based on that simply clear their adjacency list and mark them unvisited makes sense right basically we are removing this edge and uh, clearing all of the edges that we have added in this graph right after that what you do uh, you check whether a and b are uh, same or not basically their parents are same or not parent of a is, uh, parent of 1 is 1 parent of 4 is 4 that means yep these two are actually different disjoint sets what you are going to do you are simply uh, setting parent of a is equals to b i'm not using uh, union by rank here okay because i'm in the in the find function you can see i'm using path compression so simply merge it so basically what you do you remove this edge basically clear the whole graph so that next time when we go we are not dealing with the old edges okay and uh, after that you'll simply merge this now this becomes a single connected component how many uh, digit set we have now we have three single here and here right and this green represents basically parent of uh, this disjoint set right now we are under, uh, we are done with the group which is having one weight weight equal to one now start from here starting from here we'll process these three together why because all of these are having equal weights so starting from here i'll check whether parent of one and parent of two are same no parent of one is one parent of two is actually two that means these two are different and hence instead of this edge will be set to one and i'll add an edge between node one and node two right i have done that and set is uh, status to one after that i'll go to the next edge because that edge is also having the same weight now uh, parent of four is one actually and parent of three is three itself that means these two are actually different connected component that means this edge is actually connecting two different connected component and hence this edge will be part of at least one of the mst and hence you set its status to one and add this edge when you are adding this edge remember we are not adding edge between three and four no we are adding the edge between three 
basically parent of three and parent of four. Parent of three is three, parent of four is one. That's why we are adding the edge here only, right? Now, uh, I've already shown you the add, uh, add, my, uh, add edge function, right? It doesn't add the edge between A and B. It adds, uh, it add, adds edges between parent of A and parent of B, okay? Now, the next one, next edge, because this is also having equal weight. Uh, this is still the first for loop, you see? We are, we are having three for loops, right? First for adding all of the edges, second for finding all of the bridges, third for uh, merging all of the connected component, if we can. Now the uh, third edge is this, between uh, parent of two is two, parent of three is three. That means add an edge between these three, I mean two and three, and set the status of this edge as one, right? Now we are done with this. Second for loop will run and find the bridges here. If you see in this graph, you don't, these three are the only edges and you don't find any bridge here, right? These three are only edges and you don't, you see that there is not a single bridge present here. And hence, when you go through and find all of the bridges, you will find nothing and hence status of none of the edges will be changed. And hence these three edges will have status as at least one, at least one, at least one, right? And again, you will go through all of this and merge them and remove the, uh, and basically clear the graph, right? So what will happen if you see all of these will actually get connect, uh, connected, right? You see, all of them get connected. Why? You'll merge these two because of this edge, right? You'll merge one and two. So this will be part of this whole big connected component. Three and four, again, the whole thing will get connected. And of course, you are removing the edges also, right? Now, finally, we are here on the last edge. Parent of one is one, parent of three is also one. You see, their parent are same and hence this edge will not be added and hence its status will not change. It will be zero itself. Status changes only here, right? And add edge will not be called for this because parent of A and parent of B are same. So parent of A and parent of B are same. So you will simply return from here. Its status won't be changed and in the graph, you are not adding any edge. Right, and hence when you go and find the bridges, you will not have any edge, right? And hence you won't find any uh, bridges there, and that's why status of this edge will not change. So it, status of this edge is zero. That means none. And you see, this edge is part of none of the MSTs, and hence this is how you. I mean, this way you are able to find out status of each of the edges, right? And now you are done. See, as simple as that. Finally, what you can do finally you can go ahead and print the status of each of them zero means none one means at least one and uh, two means any and we are done here you see again if you're thinking that you will be able to solve this problem with minimal effort at your side you're dead wrong okay uh, you have to be like ganady or or at least the level of grandmaster international grandmaster level right to solve this problem on your own it's not like you won't be able to solve a problem on your own. You won't be able to solve this problem with minimal effort. Just by watching this lecture, you think that you can go ahead and code the solution? I highly doubt that. If you could do that, you are really, really smart and gifted person. Okay. So just go ahead. Whatever you have studied here, I'll be providing the link for this solution in the uh, description of the video. Go ahead and study the code go through this again, uh, just remember all of the observation that we made, use your pen and paper, make sure that you understand the solution at the core and that you are able to write the solution yourself, okay? So I, uh, I highly advise you to solve this problem because you see, this is a beautiful problem. It, it utilizes like three concepts at once, right? And uh, I just admire these kind of questions which are able to bring together many different techniques to form a single problem and a single solution okay so hopefully you uh, I, I was able to give you some sight that how you would proceed with this solution of this problem so uh see you guys in the next lecture thank you